So a common mistake that people make when making dot density maps is not aligning the input values with the output values. And so I wanna show a quick demonstration of both how you can tell if you've made that mistake and also how to avoid it. So first, I'm gonna demonstrate how to make that mistake. Uh, so don't do this. Um, but if you wanted to make a dot density map of state population, uh, so I can go ahead and open my attribute table and see that I have population under a column called population. So once I know that, I can use population to make a dot density map. So I'm going to go up to vector, research tools, random points in polygons. I'm going to use the states layer as my input. And then I'm going to click on the data defined override button and choose the assistant in order to set up my parameters. Now, I can put in population here as my source, but there are way too many people in the United States for this to actually be meaningful. So what I'm gonna do is divide it by, um, let's start with 10,000, um, just as a starting point. So I've divided by 10,000. Now what I'm gonna do is click on this fetch value range. So it's gonna give me the values for uh, each state. So our least populous state, when we divide the population by 10,000, we get 57.8 or 58 um, points that are going to be assigned to that state. And for our most populous state, um, when we divide the population by 10,000, we get 3,951 points that we're going to put in that state. Now, here's the part that often people um, get confused on is changing the output. So right now the output is set to one to 10. What this will do is scale our least populous state and just put one point there. And in our most populous state, it will put 10 points. So it gets rid of what we've just set up here and what's gonna enable us to actually put meaningful data or, or meaningful information in our legend to explain what those dots really mean. When we remove that scale, right? When we, when we set the output just to one to 10, it gets rid of that work that we've done and it will make our map not interpretable. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it like that so you can see what that looks like. And it's finished. So I am going to close that. And what you can see is that here in Wyoming, we've got one dot, South Dakota one dot, Nebraska one dot, because all of those are gonna be some of our least populous states. Same with New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine. Um, and so while we've got dots here, they're not actually giving us much difference in the distribution of population because we've capped California, our most populous state at 10 dots and Wyoming, our least populous state at one dot. Now. If we do the same thing, uh, vector, research tools, uh, random points in polygons, set as our input states. Again, go to this data to find override and select assistant. And for our source, once again, we're gonna put population divided by 10, oops, 10,000. Uh, we're gonna um, fetch those values. And now what we can do is we want to set this extent. Now, I want to show one more thing because this is a part that folks um, also get confused on. If we set this to zero or one, um, which is common, for example, if you are making a dot density map by smaller units. So if we're making a dot density map by county, there is such a range in the difference between um, a small county in Wyoming, say, and a huge county in um, uh, LA County. So you'll often see that when we divide our population out, you will get zeros, right? Uh, and then if we set this to our maximum, 3952, um, what it will do is produce something like this, where we don't have any dots, and I'll turn off our old layer, we don't have any dots in our least populous state, right? So what we need to do is actually set both the input uh, for the output, we need to set both the to and from range to match our input. So if we go to, and again, what that's going to do is produce an empty state, right? Or an empty unit. It doesn't matter what units you're using. If you notice an empty unit, chances are that's the mistake that you've made. Now, if we go to vector research tools, here I'm going to demonstrate how to do it properly. So if you're following along and want to follow along with me, go ahead and do this. So again, we're going to go to random points in polygons. We're going to set the states as our input layer. We're going to go to data defined override and select the assistant. 
we're going to set our source to population divided by 10,000. We're going to fetch those values. And then we're going to copy those values from here to here. Now, we can copy them with the decimals, but it, um, because we're not going to assign a partial dot, it just makes more sense to round. So 395, and actually that comes down. Uh, 3951. So because we've set both of those to match, now when we run this, we should see a better dot density map and the color there isn't ideal for standing out. So actually let's go ahead and here, we'll just do a red dot. Um, and you can see how that is, is distributed. If we go to symbology, we can shrink this down. Let's say 0.4. Okay, and we can see how that's distributed and this will, if we give it a background that it'll stand up against a bit more, we can see what that looks like. So there you can see that we have much higher population density over here in New Jersey um, and in uh, Massachusetts, right? Uh, California, Florida, than we do in Wyoming, but Wyoming isn't empty. There are people who live there. And so here we've created a dot density map where each dot stands in for 10,000 people in the population in the United States. And if we wanted to, we could uh, zoom out and look at Alaska and Hawaii as well. And we can see that as we scale, those dots scale as well, right? So we may want to adjust for as, uh, aesthetic reasons, the size of the dots, depending on what scale we wanna look at the full map at. Um, but um, we at least know that this, this range of 10,000 dots is showing us the distribution of the population, sorry, each dot being worth 10,000 people is showing us the range of the distribution of the population.